So now that we have our first React application, it be a web application, not an iPhone app or an Android app yet, um, we still want to get used to using React in the web, and I think this is a great way to get used to it. Uh, so now that we have our first React application, uh, we're going to remove a few things, and then we're going to add our own counter. So we're going to be able to ha we're going to create two buttons, one that increments the number and one that decrements the number, and we're going to do that all within this same component. So we don't need any other JavaScript library because, well, this is JavaScript. So first thing we're going to do is remove some of this junk so that uh, it's clear what everything is doing. Um, so then we're going to put in this p tag instead, we're going to do how many apps can we build? And we're going to put 10. So you can see that right now, <coughs> sorry, right now we have how many apps can we build? And then we have our React logo in here that came with the application. Uh, do keep in mind that we need to have our server running. And so that's what the React Create app does. It comes bundled with a server that allows us to hot reload. So if for some reason you uh, <coughs> stop the server itself and then reloaded the page, nothing's going to happen. So in order to start up again, we just do, you need to do npm start. And this server is just for development purposes. Uh, once we get this new feature done, we can do a build, and that'll build native HTML so that we can just upload that into GitHub Pages or any other static site provider, uh, even S3, um, instead of using Heroku or like an EC2 instance on AWS. Um, <coughs> it makes it super fast and then super easy to do a website. And so we have our React app right here. And right now we have 10 hard-coded, but we want to add two buttons that, be, that, like I said, increments and decrements the number. And so we're going to do, add two different buttons. And this is just going to be regular HTML buttons. So now we have two buttons, and on click we're going to do this dot add and this dot minus. So those are going to be two functions that we're going to create. So we have, these are our two functions that we're going to create, but there is no function for these functions that are created on the on click function. So the function way too many times there. But what we're going to do is we're going to create those. And the way we're going to do that is we named it add. So we're going to do add equals. And we're going to use uh, ES7 syntax. So this is the way we can add a function. Uh, you could also do just without the equals and the arrow key. Uh, this will also work. Um, but to keep consistent, I like to use ES7 syntax since that's what we're going to use be using in the app itself. And if we just console log adding and then we're going to copy and paste this and add another one called minus. What's the plural of minus? Uh, so now when we click it, it doesn't fail. Well, it doesn't look like it's doing anything either, but it's actually console logging. So if we go down to our console, and we can see add, 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 minus, minus, minus. So it is doing something. So there's our functions. We created two functions, an add, which is console logging adding, and a minus, which is console logging minus. And the way we're calling it is ES7 syntax with the parentheses, the arrow bracket, and then this dot add with arrow brackets. So the reason we're doing the arrow brackets is because if you remove these, these would run as soon as it's loaded. So as you can see down here, it's adding minus. And they won't work anymore. So it'll only run once. So this is 
means we could on, on click we could do this function. So when we do this, it doesn't run as soon as it loads, it only runs when we click the item. But we want to add more to this function, so we just don't want to log adding and minusing. Minusing? Sure, that sounds right. Uh, we want to add a state. So the state is what the um, So the state is the data is the data that the component is using. So we could have a application wide state and a component specific state. Uh, the application wide state is what we're going to use in the uh, Instagram application. But for this, we're just going to do within the component itself, and we can do that by state equals. It's just an object, <coughs> and an object with a item of count. And we're going to initialize that count to zero. So we're going to use that count down here, and we're going to call it. And the way we do that is this dot state dot count. So this is referring to this component. State is referring to the object state, and it has to be called state. And then component is the item within the state. So if we reload, we initialize our state with zero. But if we wanted to initialize it with ten again. We could just change the up here to 10. And now we want to be able to change this number right here instead of just console logging. So the way we do that is this dot set state. And then you want to pass in what you want to change. So we're going to do count. And then we're going to change it to we're going to change it to 11. So if we click add. It changes it to 11. You can see it's running. Uh, the problem here is that we're doing we're hard coding the number again. So what we want to do is we want to store the state and increment the state. And so we could do uh, let num equal this dot state dot count plus one. So if we change 11 to num, so what this will do, it'll find this dot state dot count, which is 10, and then increment it by one. And if we click it again, the state will be updated to 11. So then we'll add another one, and it'll be 12. So it'll be 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it'll keep on going, and it's immediate. So every single time we click it, it changes. Now we want to do the same thing for minus. So we can basically copy and paste that code and just remove one instead. So we can do zero, go to negative, and then add. So this is a super, super simple example of updating the component state. Now this state is only available within this app component. So this wouldn't work if we're having like our Instagram application that shows you we have activity, we have profile, we have a ton more functionality than just incrementing a number, incrementing, de decrementing a number. I'm struggling with that word. Um, so in the next video, we're going to create a smaller component within this component and then pass props. So passing data from one component to the other.